All right, guys, let's go ahead and talk about how this guy right here works. This is called a push button. So let's just kind of draw a picture and see what a button or a switch does in any kind of circuit that we use. So we know that every circuit is a path that starts in the positive and ends over here in the negative. Right? So, and normally, somewhere along that path, we have things like uh, an LED. So I'll draw an LED in here. There's my LED. And then sometimes I can even have a resistor. So that squiggly line represents a resistor. So normally, I would just start here and then the current would go this way. It would go into my resistor, then it would go through my resistor, and then it'd come out of the resistor and head towards the LED. It would go into the LED and come out of the LED and go that way. All right, so that uh, would be a pretty typical kind of uh, circuit. And you can see I have two things in this path. So if you remember from our last lesson, these two things, because they're in the same path, those would be considered in series to each other. All right. So how are we going to use a switch or a button now to accomplish what we want? So basically, what a switch does is it takes and interrupts that circuit. So you can see, I'll kind of draw it like, like this. Uh, so this bar at the top is like a conductor. And you can see that this conductor comes and it brings the current, but that current doesn't get to touch this conductor and that current is just kind of stuck right here so if I go and I push down on my conductor here or on this the top of this uh, button what happens is I basically push that conductor onto these other conductors and then my current has a place to go. Now it can go over here, and then it can go through the resistor, and it can go through the resistor into the LED, and then out the LED towards the negative. So I have a circuit or a path now, and that's called a closed state. So when, when I push it down, that's called closed. So right now my circuit would be closed. And if I let go of the button, okay, and that conductor is floating above those other conductors now, it's no longer a closed circuit, it is an open circuit. And an open circuit means there's like a break in the circuit um, or an interruption in the path. So the current cannot get to negative because there's an interruption along the way. So that is basically what we're going to do to a circuit using a push button here. So these push buttons, let me kind of just draw you a picture of what one would look like on the inside. So you can see here that the push button has four legs. I will always talk about the these legs in a certain way. Uh, I always look at the legs as if they were from the top and bottom. So. You can see right now that the legs are pointing out away from the top and out away from the bottom. The sides don't have legs sticking out from them. So you can see that that side has no legs and this side has no legs. It's just the top side and the bottom side. So when I hold a button in my hand, I always make sure that I'm looking at it so that it has top and bottom so that there's a set of legs pointing towards me and a set of legs pointing away from me. So kind of like I have set up right now. So I'll just set this guy to the side. If I were to open up this button, here's kind of what you would see. So you could see it's a square basically. And then from the top side, it has two legs sticking out like that. All right. So there's the two legs sticking out from the top. And then on the bottom side, it has two legs sticking out like that. All right. And on the inside, oh, and then, sorry, we have our, our button itself that we push with our finger right there in the middle. On the inside, here's how it works. 
So these two legs over here on the left are connected with a wire. And these two legs over here on the right are connected with a wire. And then this wire would be have a strip of metal or a conductor coming off of it like this. And then this wire would have a strip of metal coming off of it like that. And you could see that these two conductors are not touching each other. So right now, this would be what we call an open state button. Right? Because if I gave, let's pretend that I gave current to this set of legs. So there's a terrible positive sign. I'm sorry about that. So that means if I give current to this leg right here, that current will travel up this wire on the right hand side. And this guy up here will also have current in it. Okay. The left side of the button over here does not have current because these two conductors are not touching each other. So when I push the button, it's going to change from an open state to a closed state. And this conductor, I'm basically pushing that conductor down onto the other conductor. So now the current has a chance to go up, go through my conductors, and then over here. And as long as this side has a path to the negative, I have a flow of current through my button. So this is basically what's going on inside of a button. So remember, we want to make sure that these legs are kind of pointing up and down. We don't want to make, don't want to look at it like this, where the legs are side to side. I think that's kind of harmful. So we need to make sure that they're up and down like that. So let me go ahead and show you how I would wire one up. All right. So I'll kind of leave my diagram right there. So for a little bit of help. All right, so here's my breadboard. I'll start off by attaching my power supply to the breadboard. Okay. Kind of wants to argue with me a little bit there. Sorry about that. So now my power supply is connected to my breadboard. And here my button is in the wrong position. The legs are sticking out to the left and right side and not up and down. So I'm going to make sure that my legs are sticking up and down. There's a set of legs facing me, and there's a set of legs facing away from me. And these buttons just so happen to fit right across the middle. So I usually put the button to go right across that middle channel. So just kind of like our diagram shows, the left legs are attached to each other, and the right legs are attached to each other. But the left is not attached to the right. So you could see this uh, button looks like it's in row 17 and row 19. So everything in row 17 will have current now, even the other side, because that little wire on the inside brings current to both sides of 17. Same with 19. Everything in 19 on the top and the bottom will have current if I bring it current. But the row 17 and row 19 are not connected until I do this and I push my button down. That was essentially going to connect row 17 and row 19. So this is what I'll want to do. I'll want to attach one side of the button to current. So here's uh, a wire. I put it into positive, so that has 5 volts of current. And I attach the other side to row 19. So that means the right side of my button has current. I didn't have to be the right-hand side. I could have made the left-hand side of the button uh, have current, too. It doesn't really matter. The only thing that matters is when I push the button, the two sides of the button will connect. So the right side, that's row 19, has positive current. And row 17, the left side of the button, that row will have current when I push the button. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take current from row 17, doesn't matter where, uh, and then I'm going to put that in a different row. So let's put that current into row 14. So that current is going to go through this wire, and it's going to stop and wait at the button. That current is going to stop at the button until I push it. When I push the button, the current is going to go to the left side of the button, which is row 17. That current is going to go through my resistor, and then down into row 14. So row 14 will only get current when I actually push the button. 
And because it's going through a resistor, that, that current is now safe to use for an LED. So I will plug uh, the long end of my LED into row 14 because that is positive current. And the short end of my LED can go into any other row. It looks like I put it into row 11 there. And I only need it to do one more thing now. I need to attach negative current. So I have the negative. Uh, this wire is plugged into the negative. So where's the last place my current was in this circuit? So it went through this wire. When I push the button, it will go through the button. Uh, it will go through this resistor. It will go through that LED and be stuck in row 11. So that means row 11 needs to be attached to that like so. And that should do the trick. So I'm going to plug this in and turn it on. All right. My light is not working right now, and that's because my button is in the open state.